Hello Watch Enthusiasts, and welcome to Watch Chronicler. Titanium is a popular yet strangely misunderstood material amongst watches. Now I realise that a robust understanding of metallurgy and watch brand advertising don't necessarily go together, but titanium in all its grades, finishes and treatments still eludes many buyers through no fault of their own. On the face of things, titanium should be a brilliant material for a watch. It's very resistant to corrosion, it's considerably lighter than steel, and yet can be made harder. Even so, choosing the right watch in titanium is a complex task. In this video I'd like to present 5 watches which exemplify the best in their categories, and often the most value-centred options in the world of titanium watchmaking. Firstly I must say that this video has been kindly sponsored by Aquastar watches, more about their subaquatic timepieces later. Before that, however, I'd like to briefly run through the two primary forms of titanium found in watches. Generally, at the lower end of the price spectrum we have grade 2 titanium, which along with grades 1 through 4 is considered commercially pure. The difference between these is the presence of more or less of other naturally occurring or interstitial elements within metal. The general trend is that, as a greater concentration of these elements is found, the material becomes stronger overall. As such, grade 2 is a moderately strong and not particularly hard, but extremely corrosion resistant material. As a result of these properties, it's rarely seen in polished form and is usually either brushed or bead blasted. Exceptions do exist, but they tend to make for an easily marked watch case. Grade 5, on the other hand, is not commercially pure and contains aluminium and tin to produce a material with much more potential for hardening. It's also stronger overall and can be finished in a very fine polish, much like steel can be. The only downside to grade 5 titanium is slightly lower resistance to corrosion, although this still vastly exceeds most steels, and indeed the requirements for any real watch case. To give you an idea, a Tudor Pelagos is made from grade 2 titanium with a 316L stainless steel case back, whilst the Rolex Seedweller Deep Sea is 904L stainless steel, a softer but much more corrosion resistant form with a grade 5 titanium case back. Something worth noting is that grade 5 titanium is generally more expensive and is seen therefore on more costly timepieces. But where to start with the recommendations for the best titanium watches out there? Due to its lightness and more specialised nature than steel, most titanium watches are sports watches, and this is where I'm going to stick for this video. But the brand with which we should begin was, until a few months ago, one I hadn't actually handled personally, but which made quite a name for itself in the field, Bertucci. Bertucci is one of a fair few brands competing to produce genuine tool watches, in the sense that their timepieces are not expensive, fancy or complex, they're tough, well-designed watches for the great outdoors. Unusually, in fact, I'm not going to recommend any particular model, because frankly it's probably best to choose that for yourself. You see, at base, this brand has one particular format, which has been with it, essentially, since inception in 2003. A case with long but curved lugs, a thick, impact-deflecting bezel, and a crown nestled at 4 o'clock. Even so, this hasn't stopped them from launching a staggering number of models, and in titanium alone, the classic case profile comes in 40, 42 and 44mm sizes, depending upon the variant. The most conventional model, and arguably the most desirable, is the A2T, a 40mm piece in blasted or polished titanium with a 200m water resistance and various dials for either a truly utilitarian look or a more vintage inspired one. Above this model comes the A40, a 44mm case, essentially the same specifications, but with an aviation inclination, as well as the A11T, a 42mm piece, with a more squared off case design, and a dial reminiscent of those models produced for the American Air Force during the Second World War. Whilst these might all have different flavours, several aspects are shared. Firstly, all have a proper 200m water resistance, so if your adventure takes you underwater, your watch will be right with you. Secondly, they have fixed bars integrated into the case for maximum strength on the strap, but most importantly, all use Japanese, Swiss or American quartz movements. Now for a mid $200 price, some would prefer a low level automatic, but let me put a view to you. How accurate is a $200 Seiko or Citizen automatic? And how accurate should a watch which, when needed, will be your only tool be? In this context, I think a reliable quartz makes perfect sense, and perhaps more to the point as a collection, is infinitely more authentic for such a tool. Altogether then, a titanium Bertucci is a brilliant way to adopt the benefits of titanium on a modest budget. Moving above this price, there is a somewhat difficult zone, because you do have some titanium watches from Seiko and from Citizen for example, but these pieces tend to be fairly thin on the ground, with very few mechanical options still available, with both brands moving above £1000 these days for a mechanical titanium watch. Otherwise you do have pieces from Steinhardt for example, but I think that if you go a bit higher in price, you're able to get an awful lot more for your money in terms of value. 
So a model further up the price ladder is one coming in just under £1,000 and which is based on a limited edition from a few years ago, the Christopher Ward C60 Elite 1000 or the 1000m Trident. For three generations, Christopher Ward's Trident could reasonably be seen as one of the very finest in recent memory within the reasonably affordable price bracket by delivering a good individual design, a Swiss movement and all the features you would expect at that given point in time. In the spirit of this, the latest generation of Trident has embraced titanium as a fantastic material for a big, strong dive watch. As the range-topping model, the Elite 1000 is the largest model at 42mm, but don't let that put you off. The case size is mitigated by short lugs and taken advantage of with a good dial size to house a day-date indicator. Otherwise, the design of the Trident is best described as complex but elegant, with a range of brushed and polished facets, as well as some design elements specific to the model, such as a finely toothed coin edge bezel. This isn't to mention detailing such as a fine lip around the bezel insert to give a smooth surface, and an ornate and well-engineered helium escape valve. Where many dive watches might appeal to an eventual Rolex buyer, there's a lot of Seamaster charm to the Trident, but this watch also presents a dichotomy, or perhaps a compromise is a better way of saying it, to suit most tastes. On the one hand, the watch is far more intentionally styled than, for example, a Rolex Submariner, but on the other, it is a serious tool with a fully luminous bezel, excellent bicolour superluminova, and an entirely sensible Salita SW220 inside, a clone of the ETA 2836 automatic Swiss movement. As a single product, I think the Trident Elite makes a much more versatile product than, for example, the much more expensive Oris Aquis Titanium on account of this very compromise. Still, don't let this compromise make you think the aesthetics of this watch are only half-baked. As for detailing, the hands and markers are brushed with polished bevels, the lacquered dial is glossy and brilliant in black or blue, and the bezel can be either polished or brushed ceramic in blue and orange, or black and red. Of course, there are some idiosyncrasies to this watch which you'll have to accept to fully enjoy this Swiss dive watch, including a hefty 15.4mm thickness, and the fact that, at this price, softer grade 2 titanium has been used. Whilst this is no deal breaker, you do have to accept that, when paired with a complex mix of finishes, it will perhaps be more easily marked than the steel equivalent. Even so, Considering that titanium dive watches costing three times as much share similar specifications, the C60 Trident Elite 1000 is a steal. If you're enjoying this video, I suspect that dive watches and the history of subaquatic exploration will be of interest, including the work of Jacques Cousteau. Following his joint invention of the Aqualung in 1943 with Émile Gagnon, Cousteau's influence on many of our imaginations came with episodes of The Undersea World of Jacques Cousteau, appearing from 1966 to 76 in its first run. What few may know, however, is that the watch seen in the first episode of this hugely influential series was the Aquastar Deep Star, perhaps the most important diving chronograph of all time, usable down to 100 metres, and with the provision to calculate necessary decompression for consecutive dives. Nevertheless, by the 21st century, the brand had all but disappeared from the diving scene. However, in 2020, under the new ownership of the Synchron Group, the company that brought back icons like the Doxa Sub in the early 2000s, Aquadive and also the Isofrane and Tropic Straps, Aquastar is back with the brand new Deep Star, with modern specifications and classical looks. Watch our review to find out more, or head over to aquastar.ch to get your own piece of dive watch history. In order to understand this third watch, you have to realise that I have a real liking for metals being used for their intended functions. Perhaps that's why I have no interest in two-tone watches, because ultimately you're compromising the use of one material with another for no reason other than vanity. Aside from its use underwater, titanium has also become the metal of choice for extreme aeronautic applications, and we often hear stories about titanium ore being clandestinely brought from the USSR to produce Lockheed's famous SR-71 Blackbird spy plane. Where watches are concerned, it's just as useful, particularly when you want a watch to survive pretty much anything whilst being comfortable. This is the case with DIN 8330, a German standard for a replacement of the in-cockpit clock if this should fail. Now, DIN 8330 found its origins in 2012 when, with the cooperation between Zinn and Arken University of Applied Sciences, a set of specifications could be determined for just such a watch. This original TESTAV certification has since been adopted by both Zinn and Stover as leading German aviation watch brands and was developed in 2015 into a proper DIN certification in the same way as ISO 6425 defines what can be called a dive watch. DIN 8330 includes a wide range of tests from the obvious legibility criteria, which extend also to the function of the watch not visually interfering with other equipment, to a range of shock, vibration, high and low pressure tests, 
in addition to a guaranteed accuracy between minus 15 and 50 degrees centigrade. Zinn, by the way, outdo this with accuracy between minus 45 and plus 80 degrees. As a final touch, these watches need to be capable of being immersed in any fluid found in a plane from water to fuel. The product of these specifications was the Zinn 103 Ti IFR and 103 Ti UTC IFR, the GMT version of the former. These watches take the form of Zinn's most traditional aviation design, with squared beveled lugs in bead-blasted titanium and a rotating countdown captive bezel screwed into place. At 41mm, it's a reasonably sized piece, whilst the 17mm thickness, a product of its 200m water resistance, Venture 7750 based movement and exhibition case back, is somewhat minimised by a 69 gram weight. The first thing you'll notice about this model is how far it moves away from the original 103, with its syringe hands and similarities to Zinn's 101, one of their first models. The hands are now simplified and more legible, and the hour counter and day have been removed to keep just the most necessary measurements. In addition to all this, you have to appreciate the toughness of this particular 103. Crucially, this isn't a watch designed to be the most complex model in the range. After all, it lacks some of the Veljoo 7750's intrinsic features, and Zinn offers diapal escapements for much more complex offerings. Instead, this watch has every measure to protect its function, including Zinn's well-known dehumidifying technology, by which a copper chloride capsule absorbs any remaining internal moisture after the watch is filled with inert gas. With a base price of about €2,500, rising by 500 for each model if you add a second time zone function, this watch was arguably a costly piece for the movement used when first launched about five years ago. Today, though, it's exceptionally priced if you look across the market as a truly remarkable tool, if of course that's what you want from your titanium timepiece. Sitting on the more affordable end of the luxury market, we come to a piece which, try as I might, can't be ignored. Usually I operate a clear policy of no repetition in these recommendation videos, yet the Tudor Pelagos is one which invariably slips through the net. On the face of things, the Pelagos really ought to be swamped in competition. For roughly £3,500, Tag Heuer have an Acro Acer which is reduced to a joke on the specifications front before we even discuss the design. On the more affordable end, you have the Zin T1, but this 45mm watch is not only too big, but also too technical for many, a problem which also applies to the 1000m Seiko Tuner and even the new Oris Aquis Pro Date Calibre 400, which also seems to be a bit too expensive for the brand which is presenting it. By contrast, priced at £3,440, the Tudor Pelagos is a very rare watch. It's a rare watch because it's unbelievably uncommon for a luxury brand to use its enormous resources not to make a watch more appealing to the casual buyer, but rather to make one which is prepared to sacrifice widespread appeal to be a landmark release. This is, in my opinion, exactly what Tudor did with the Pelagos, particularly when they moved to an in-house movement. They made the case from grade 2 titanium for a dark, very corrosion-resistant finish at the cost of scratch resistance, whilst the case back and clasp are steel for durability, and to avoid the threading problems so often experienced with titanium cases with matching titanium case backs. The bezel is matte ceramic for unbeatable legibility, whilst the case is simply brushed. This was also the watch to bring Tudor's fantastic in-house movement to their diving collection, with its 70-hour power reserve, chronometer accuracy, and silicon componentry. Topping it all off, a helium escape valve, a 500m torch resistance, and a rubber strap extender were all offered in the box for serious professional users. Now by the way, Tudor no longer offers two straps with any of their watches, except for precious metal pieces and the Pelagos. In a world where the Rolex Seedwell is a piece of jewellery, this is a very refreshing watch. Of course, a key part of buying a Pelagos is choosing the right configuration, and as has been the case for the last few years, three options are available. Black, blue, the most popular version, and the LHD model, a left-handed version modelled on a particular Marine Nationale example with iconic red dial text. In truth, that final numbered edition is probably the one to have if you're happy with the quirks of the model. With that being said, I do wonder whether Tudor has yet to unveil a master chronometer certified model in association with the Marine Nationale as they seem to be promising, or at least angling towards. In any case, it remains the best titanium watch for the price, even if it may be too chunky for some. Looking at the upper levels of the titanium watch market, above that Tudor, there's a surprising variety to choose from. Breitling, for instance, has recently launched their colourful 48mm Super Ocean in titanium with a button-controlled pusher, whilst Blancpain continues to offer a range of 50 Fathoms models, as charming as they are eye-wateringly expensive. Even Grand Seiko has a pair of finely finished dive watches for 200 and 600m depths, respectively. However, ultimately, I don't think that you can find any better in terms of a cost-product ratio than the Omega Seamaster Planet Ocean in titanium. 
In many ways, you can often gauge more about a watch from what doesn't need to be said than from what does. We already know that the Planet Ocean is a 600m water-resistant watch with a now refined 43.5mm case, iconic dial and lyre lugs drawn from the similarly iconic 60s second generation Seamaster 300. More than this, what can be felt is important too. In the hand, these Seamasters are shockingly well made. Their crowns, both of them, are immaculately machined, their bezel action is superb, and the dial and hand fixtures are almost always perfect. We really have reached a stage where Omega's only reason for being seen as lesser than Rolex is their incomprehensible range, lack of exclusivity, and half a century of branding trouble. What does have to be said about this Planet Ocean is that it folds exciting technology into every corner. The bezel insert, luminous to match the minute hand, is liquid metal ceramic, a process of compressing metal into grooves in the ceramic insert, whilst orange rubber is inserted for contrast to add orange. To add to this, the movement is from Omega's 8900 series, and to all intents and purposes, is entirely anti-magnetic, delivers stunning accuracy for 65 hours, and even has an independent hour hand for quick time zone changes. To top off the whole package, like an upmarket version of the Christopher Ward from earlier, the Seamaster is grade 5 titanium, for proper, serious scratch resistance, a much cleaner colour, and polished surfaces which will last the test of time. Of course, this watch is hardly affordable at twice the price of the Pelagos, yet all things considered, I think that it will be exceptionally difficult to find a watch capable of making better use of titanium, even for twice as much money again. Another word of advice, if the somewhat austere current generation model with its grey dial and sizeable price increase over steel isn't to your liking, why not consider the previous generation, which I've also included photos of in this video. With a simpler dial and colour scheme, as well as versions in 42 and 45.5mm, this watch costs only two-thirds as much on the used market, at really the only appreciable cost of having a less anti-magnetic movement and an older model. It's a steal, if you ask me. Anyway, I'll conclude the video there, but let me know what you think of the pieces I've mentioned. Would you choose one of these pieces, or would you look for something else? Tell me in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like, subscribe, and to hit the bell icon to keep these videos coming. Thank you very much for watching. This is Armon from WatchChronicle.com. Out.